Welcome to Ain't Life Great 4x4. Today we're going to talk about open differentials, axle lockers, and how they relate to full and part-time four-wheel drive. We're going to focus this video at those who are just getting into the sport. We're going to assume that maybe you've heard these terms before, but you really have no idea what they do, how they work, or when to use them. First, we're going to need to get the disclaimer out of the way. So basically, what kind of looks like a fun test is actually really dangerous. And we thought about not even doing this video because we had to kind of break some basic safety rules about lifting vehicles and applying power to a lifted vehicle. And we did them carefully and we did it thoughtfully. And even then it was kind of risky. So please enjoy the video, but don't try to do these tests at home. Okay, let's talk about the definitions you're gonna to need to know to get a foundation to understand the concepts explained in this video. First, what is a differential? Well, basically, a differential is a set of gears located in the front or rear axle, or in the case of a full-time four-wheel drive, in the transfer case. The differential in the transfer case is known as the center differential. A differential allows wheels to rotate at different speeds, but the applied torque is the same. Now we have axle lockers. What are they? Well, an axle locker basically locks the axle. So now the wheels have to rotate at the same speed. And because they rotate at the same speed, they must drop different levels of torque at the terrain at the wheels. So a locker, same speed, different torque, differential, different speeds, same torque. You will hear four-wheel drive enthusiasts and those that are really into the sport, they will describe their vehicle as having front and rear lockers or a center differential locker. That doesn't mean that their locker is engaged. See, most lockers nowadays are selectable, meaning you can turn them on or off. You turn them on when you need them, turn them off when you don't. Now, there are automatic mechanical lockers, but the nuances of these type of lockers are kind of outside the scope of this vi video. So just be aware that they do exist. Just to know if someone says, hey, I got lockers front and rear, that doesn't really mean that their lockers are on all the time. Let's discuss part-time four-wheel drive, or what is sometimes called, you know, standard four-wheel drive. This is basically what was in most four-wheel drives, especially American makes and models, you know, from decades ago. What this type of vehicle is equipped with is typically open differentials, front and rear, and the transfer case does not have a differential, which means it allows the front and rear axles to rotate at the same speed, applying different levels of torque to the front and rear axles. Basically, it functions as if there was a center differential that's locked and is always locked. Now, a full-time four-wheel drive is typically equipped with an open differential on the front and rear axles. Now, the transfer case is also equipped with a differential. This allows the output shafts of the transfer case, the front and rear drive lines to the axles, to rotate at different speeds and apply the same amount of torque to each wheel. Most of these are equipped with a center differential locker. Sometimes this locker is automatic when you shift into four low, like on early ZJ Grand Cherokees, but most of the time you'll have a button on your dash like this. When you push that button and engage the center differential locker, the vehicle now essentially acts like a part-time four-wheel drive because now the drive lines on the front and the rear have to rotate at the same speed. As this video progresses, we will tell you the advantages and disadvantages of each type of four-wheel drive system. And to do this, we are going to use a 2003 Lexus LX470, which is essentially a 100 series Toyota Land Cruiser with a Lexus badge. Now this vehicle is equipped with open differentials front and rear and a full-time transfer case with a center differential locker. We are also gonna be using a 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, which is part-time four-wheel drive, meaning there is no center differential, and it is equipped with front and rear axle lockers. Now the first question, why a center differential at all? Why not just do part-time four-wheel drive all the time or keep your center differential locked? Well, that's actually easy to show, and you don't even need to go off-road to do it. You can do this test in a parking lot. Now what we have here is the 2015 Wrangler Rubicon in the parking lot in four-wheel drive high with the front and rear lockers disengaged. As he turns this corner, that's good. You can actually hear the chirping in the binding of the drivetrain. What is going on here is the transfer case has to send 
equal rotational speed to the front and rear drive line and as the vehicle turns it wants to rotate those wheels at different speeds but it can't so the chirping is the traction of the front tires actually slipping you can actually see the drivetrain also binding That's good. as it tries to fight this from the momentum of the turn and now you can imagine this is really bad on the drivetrain. We're just in a parking lot doing this rather slowly. Imagine you're in a city now at 35 miles an hour or the freeway at 70 miles an hour on dry pavement. For those of you that have may maybe had experience with older four-wheel drives, you might remember in the owner's manual or actually stuck on the vehicle dashboard, a warning saying not to use four-wheel drive high on pavement, especially above 45 miles an hour. This is one of those reasons why it's really bad on the drivetrain. Here we have the Lexus sitting in the parking lot. The front and rear do not have lockers. They're just open differentials and the transfer case is unlocked. As the Lexus spins in the circle, notice it does so rather smoothly. But really, there is no chirping, there is no real binding here, the vehicle is turning just fine. And that's because the differential in the transfer case is allowing the front and rear drive shafts to spin at different rates, but applying equal amount of torque to the front and rear wheels. Now watch as he engages the center differential locker, you will notice that the LX470 starts chirping. just like the Jeep Wrangler. And that is because a locked center differential on a full-time transfer case acts just like part-time four-wheel drive. So now you might be wondering, well, what's the point of part-time four-wheel drive or a locked center differential? Well, we can show you this. So right now we have the LX470 with one wheel off the ground. Now the vehicle is in neutral, so the engine and the transmission is disconnected from the system but all of the differential drivetrain components through the transfer case are still connected. So as the assistant applies wheel spin to this wheel in the air, you will notice this tire spins easily. There's nothing resisting it. If you look underneath, you will see that the drive line is still spinning, which means the gears in the transfer case are spinning. The amount of torque you can supply, if all torque has to be equal, is the minimum amount of torque that can be dropped onto the terrain. In this case, the, the wheel in the air, this is the one that can supply the minimum amount of torque. It's not touching the terrain. It can't lay down any force there. So that means it gets all of the wheel speed because wheel speeds can be different. But the other three wheels, they have to supply zero torque, just like the wheel in the air. So this vehicle is now stuck. Now the crazy thing about a full-time transfer case is it doesn't matter which wheel is in the air. So in this case, we will raise the front wheel off the ground and you will notice the front wheel just spins. Now you might be thinking, well, if we had the vehicle in drive and there were power to the wheels, it would just walk right off the jacks. Well, we can show this too. Okay, let it off. See that front, now there's the open differential. Okay, turn it off, that's going too fast. Let's go back to the disclaimer here. Uh, for the purpose of this test, I have the traction control disabled because traction control would locate the slip and it would walk right off the jack stand. So again, please don't try these tests at home. Okay, so this is all good and dandy theoretical in a garage, but does it really apply in the real world? In the real world, you have some momentum. You're not going to have be up on a jack stand. Well, actually, I had this scenario once. I took my 1994 Grand Cherokee to Moab. Some of you may recognize this obstacle as the golden crack on Golden Spike Trail. Now there's a lot going on in this picture and let's talk about some of the stuff here. Now one thing you'll notice that I have spare tires in the crack. The spare tires are in the crack because I don't have lockers on the front and rear differentials. Now at a certain time going through this obstacle, your vehicle will be off camber to where a front wheel and a rear wheel will basically be unable to supply torque to the ground. So you cannot go through unless you have an axle locker. And we knew this. And so we tried to mitigate that problem by filling in the crack with spare tires. And we got in there and we had one wheel in the air the front right wheel in the photo. You can't see it. The photo is at the end when we're pushing us out because the 1994 
Grand Cherokee does not have a center differential locker. Essentially, it was all-wheel drive. That front passenger tire just spun, and we were stuck. Now let's take a look at the part-time Jeep Wrangler in the same scenario with one wheel in the air and the assistant applying rotational force to the wheel. You will see that he cannot free spin the wheel. You see that lock not moving at all. And the noise, the clanking is right here. That's the transfer case. You can hear that noise. It's because it cannot move. And you will see that the vehicle is not moving and that's because the front wheels are blocked for safety reasons for this test and we aren't applying so much power to rotate the wheels off the block. Now, if we did this test running like we did on the open differential, this vehicle would walk right off the jack stands. So if we would have had the ability to lock the center differential on my Grand Cherokee on the Golden Crack, we would have made it over. Now we have the Jeep Wrangler with two wheels on the same side, front and rear, in the air. Now they don't have to be the same wheels on the same side. We did this to make filming easier. In fact, on the Golden Crack, it's actually just the opposite. It is a rear wheel and a front wheel on opposite ends, which are either in the air or close to being in the air. In, in short, they can't supply traction to the ground and is why that obstacle requires a traction aid such as a mechanical locker. What you'll see here is when the assistant applies rotational force to the rear wheel, the front wheel also spins at the same side. Looking underneath, you will see that the part-time transfer case requires the front and rear drive lines to rotate at the same speed. But how come the wheels on the ground don't move? Well, that is because the front and rear axles have an open differential. Now remember, the open differential requires that each pair of wheels put down the same amount of torque. But the center transfer case requires, because it's essentially locked, to apply the same rotation front and rear. So what happens in the drivetrain is the transfer case is taking the engine RPMs, gearing it down, and it's rotating the front and rear axles at the same speed. As that power goes to the differential axles in the front and rear, the open differentials is saying, I have to equalize the torque. Now I can have separate torque front and rear because the center differential is essentially locked. They just have to be the same speed. But the open differential says, I have to equalize the torque between the pair of wheels. Since once wheel, one wheel is in the air, the torque cannot be laid to the ground, which means it gets all the momentum and zero torque, and the one on the ground, which has the traction, gets zero torque to balance the torque and none of the momentum. And so you are stuck in this scenario on the jack stands. It's as if the vehicle had one side on ice and the other side on the pavement. Or in the case of the golden crack, you have opposite wheels in the air spinning. The Jeep is now stuck in my garage, just like the Land Cruiser was. And we can duplicate this same test on the LX470 and you'll get both wheels in the air spinning. Okay, we're ready. And there you go, that's in drive with the differential lock. And now we are going to engage the rear locker. We can raise the other rear wheel in the air and apply rotational force. Now it's taking the assistant a lot more force to get the wheels rotating, and that's because on the Jeep, the only way to engage the rear locker is to be in four wheel drive low, and he's on the wrong end of the four to one transfer case. You will see now that the rear wheels are spinning at the same speed, and the front wheel that's in the air is also spinning at the same speed. And that is because in the rear axle, they are locked together and both rear wheels have to spin at the same speed. The front output shaft has to also spin at the same speed. But since the front axle differential is open, and since one of the wheels is in the air, it gets all of the momentum and there is zero torque on the front axle. Now, this should show you why many manufacturers such as Toyota and the Tacoma and the Forerunners and such like that are equipped with just a rear locker and not the front locker. You know, honestly, you think about it, you will have to have three wheels in the air to be immobile, like in this test. And if you've got three wheels in the air, I don't care where you are. That's just a bad day. 
Now, if you take a look at the loose terrain that's going on here at Rose Garden Hill, which we went up this past year, this terrain style is really hard and even thwarted having front and rear lockers off. So, you know, there are times in extreme technical trails where the terrain, the allowable traction on the terrain itself is loose and it varies as it goes up the hill or the incline or wherever you're at, you want to put the maximum amount of force from your wheels to that terrain to get you up and over. And in order to do that, you need both front and rear lockers engaged. Well, now we've kind of shown you what's going on underneath the vehicle and kind of explained some of the physics behind how these systems work and how they give you traction in four wheel drive situations. So in closing, let's kind of briefly discuss when and where to use these tools. So first off, full-time four wheel drive with all open differentials. Now I really like this setup for everyday driving, but let's think about a vehicle driving on the freeway at 60, 75 miles an hour, and it starts to snow or rain or conditions are really bad, is it drives and it hits some uh, some black ice or something, the wheel that hits the ice will spin. Now because it is a open differential vehicle, that wheel can now supply zero torque to the road, and all the other wheels have to supply zero torque too. So you're essentially kind of sliding. Now the system will pick up and, and your stability control will kick in and it'll apply braking, and when it does this, it, it supplies torque now to the wheels that are on the pavement and it will save you from the skid. But even if you don't have stability control or those ABS aids coming in to help you, as soon as you get off the black ice, again, that torque stabilizes and you can maintain control, hopefully before you get out into a flat spin. So for everyday driving, the open differential is perfect. And the reason it's open, it allows you to make those turns at highway speed without chirping, binding up your drive line, and damaging things. So full-time four-wheel drive is awesome. So when would you use part-time four-wheel drive or locking the center differential? I engage the center differential lock in four low when I'm going up technical obstacles. And to do that is for the reasons shown in this video. I want to make sure that I have rotational speed to the front and rear axles, and then I can go up and let the traction control or whatever do its thing. If I had a rear locker, I probably would engage that as well because that allows more traction and it's less shock to the drivetrain to crawl with lockers on than it is to wait for the ABS system to pulse. So in four low on my Lexus, I don't just engage the center differential lock and leave it there. Just like in the parking lot test, when I turn on Slick Rock in Moab, it chirps. And you can see Wranglers doing this all the time. Me, I leave the center differential off and I rotate just fine. It's better on my tires, it's better on my gears, but when I hit an obstacle, I'll turn it on and then turn it right off. So it just kind of depends on your personal preference there. When do I engage the front locker? Well, the front locker I engage like on Rose Garden Hill where the obstacle is pretty much straight up and it's loose and I wanna make sure I have traction down to all four wheels at the same time. Other than that, the front locker really doesn't get used as much because of how much it inhibits turning. So there you have it, clear as mud. I hope that helped and um, please, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. Those are the best things you can do to show your appreciation and again, encourage us to give other content. Also, if you're a more experienced four-wheeler and there's some stuff in this video that you'd like to add or maybe some stuff that you say, hey, you know what, I don't think it's that way, that's fine. Leave that comment below also because, you know, four-wheeling, overlanding, exploring in general, for the most part is a skill that's taught from family member to family member, to friend to friend, or nowadays YouTube video to YouTube video, and there's really no right or wrong way to do it. So let's hear alternate viewpoints below too, and I hope to see y'all on the trail.